uh, might have seen uh, when Muriel said that she had an out-of-date version of her notes, me panicking, opening up my notes. Turns out I have the, the right one, so that's uh, that's good, obviously. That's you're younger. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have forgotten my notes more times than I care to admit. In fact, uh, Zach knows this too, he's one of my former students. I do this all the time, so don't worry about it. Um, so obviously I can't uh, possibly bring the, uh, the amount of nuance and uh, uh, experience and detail that you get from these, these lovely presentations we just heard. Um, instead, what I'd like to do is talk about uh, some institutional characteristics of, of city government in Winnipeg uh, as they relate to accountability, uh, which is the big thing that I'm going to be uh, talking about today. So I have uh, a question uh, that's going to structure the talk. Uh, these slides will not uh, knock your socks off the little basic. Uh, the question is, is uh, uh, why does accountability seem to be lacking in Winnipeg local politics? I, I get the impression that not many people will disagree with the statement. They know accountability is great in Winnipeg. And probably most people agree. And sitting in your, your house watching the news, and they say, uh, ask yourself, well, why does accountability seem to be lacking in Winnipeg local politics? It may not be phrased that way. Uh, if it is, you might be a political scientist, but, uh, but most people will have thought that. Now, it turns out that this isn't uh, a, a, a shocking state of affairs, the fact that the accountability isn't uh, uh, particularly good in Winnipeg. Uh, and the reason for that is because I'd like to argue that there are some institutional characteristics of uh, Winnipeg, uh, Winnipeg structure government that actually lends itself to some fairly poor accountability uh, from city government. And I, I agree that that is uh, certainly the case. So the idea here is how government is structured has some effect on the accountability of elected officials, change the institutions of government, and you get different types of accountability. You'll get good accountability or bad accountability. What's delightful uh, is Bill already mentioned some of these institutional characteristics. A big one is the uh, the number of councillors, uh, 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 of course, the number of boards that are represented, which has a big effect, I think, on accountability. So we'll we'll talk about that. So the first one: there's no parties. We have parties in Vancouver, in Montreal, but not uh, present in Winnipeg. So how do parties help accountability? Well, first it should be said, everyone hates parties. They think they're terrible democratic actors. But it turns out that if you're talking about accountability, if you're concerned about accountability, parties can be a very good thing. <clears throat> think about question period in Ottawa or here in uh, uh, Winnipeg. Question period is great for accountability. Nowadays, everyone sort of nitpicks at question period, so they don't give meaningful answers. But when it comes to accountability, think about what question period is. Every single day that Parliament is in session, a group of people that do not like the government, they want to defeat them, they want to embarrass them, they want to rip them to shreds, has an opportunity to question the government and hold them accountable. That's a remarkable feature of parliamentary government, and it's fantastic for accountability. Why does it work so well? The reason is it's because it's in the opposition's best interest to hold the government to account, and that's because they've organized themselves into different parties, parties that are going to be competing against each other in the next election with clear lines of competition. There's no doubt that Thomas Mulcair will be competing against Stephen Harper in the next election. They know that. Uh, and so whatever Mulcair can do in the meantime to embarrass Harper is going to pay off for him later on. It just so happens that accountability is a great thing that comes along with that. So parties can enhance accountability. They do so by incentivizing behavior that's actually really good for accountability. Of course, we don't have that in Winnipeg. In Winnipeg, this isn't true at all. The self-interest of councillors, for example, isn't wrapped up in holding other councillors or even the mayor accountable. Sometimes the opposite seems to be true. And we're going to see on the next point that uh, it's usually not in councillors' best interest to kind of go out and act in such a way as to hold uh, other political, uh, sorry, other political actors accountable. Now, you can make the argument that councillors do organize themselves into groups on the basis of beliefs or ideology, and sometimes parties lurk just behind the scenes. And there's some, certainly, some truth to that. <clears throat> in Winnipeg, we know some councillors, Councillor Norton, Councillor Fielding, are very clearly Tories. And they bring kind of center-right concerns to their uh, their work on council, but on, on council. But overall, Winnipeg councillors are actually pretty terrible 
at, uh, at sticking together, at forming these kinds of groups and sticking together over time. We see lots of drift, lots of deal making, and it works against accountability. When you actually look at the, the vote, the, the way that councillors vote in Toronto, which also doesn't have parties, those councillors are actually a lot better at sticking together. They form factions and they vote together more over time. In Winnipeg, that's not the case. So we don't have parties. Uh, we don't have kind of pseudo parties, uh, uh, groups that look like parties, we don't have factions, and it's bad for accountability. <clears throat> Did that come up? A few councils, yeah. So this is the point that Bill made uh, several, time, uh, several times. Uh, having a small number of councillors uh, is bad for accountability. Winnipeg has 15 councillors, not as small as Vancouver, uh, which only has 10. Uh, they got the, the big California <clears throat> tradition, but it's still an overall pretty small number. Now the problem that the bill alluded to with the small chamber is that it inevitably leads to a politics that is pretty personalistic, that involves deal making, back padding, and all the kind of stuff that comes with small groups of people. Councillors who want to do well for their wards know that the key to doing so is maintaining relationships with the right people, and oftentimes the right people are other councillors and the mayor. Relationships may break down, but you'll often see them reconstructed later on. They do so. That's their survival instinct uh, kicking in. In fact, the last few days we saw uh, uh, news, I think it was in the Free Press, uh, 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 councillors uh, unveiling playgrounds in their, in their wards this close to an election campaign. Wow, shocking behavior. Um, my own councillor, uh, <laughs> his, his Twitter feed is burning up. I've never seen so many splash pads in my life, or I guess they're playgrounds. Uh, but, and it turns out that one of these playgrounds was funded in part through the, uh, the mayor's discretionary spending fund. So, well, I shouldn't have made that face, that's not exactly scandalous behavior, but it does show that holding the mayor accountable, going after him, it's not a behavior that's going to pay off if you want a great playground in your ward a few weeks just before the election campaign, stay on the mayor's good side, he might actually be able to help you out. Other councillors can help out too. We know another councillor is trying to get support to uh, uh, move money into a fund where she can buy chairs for a new church in her ward. I'm sure the members of that church would love to uh, have their new chairs just in time for the election. Uh, but the councillor needs the support of other councillors to actually do that. There's no incentive for the kind of of, of pushy behavior that leads to accountability within that kind of small councillor context. Uh, right, so then we go to number three. Third reason uh, for lack of accountability is this executive body uh, of sorts that is actually quite large, very large relative to the, uh, the size of the council and has this never-ending shifting composition. So first it's large, uh, six councillors out of 15, that's 40% of the council. Uh, will not be participating in holding the executive accountable. In fact, they actually have their fingers in this executive body. Uh, needless to say, 40% of MPs do not uh, sit in the cabinet at the federal level, thank goodness. Uh, and the, this percentage is uh, quite a bit lower in places like Toronto, which also has an executive council. Perhaps more importantly, the composition of the committee is very fluid. We hear many stories about members getting into disputes with the mayor and then leaving, others get brought on, uh, and then some councils, they get into a dispute with the mayor, they leave, and then a few years later, they're back on the council again. It's, a, it's kind of a remarkable shifting membership for the executive that we don't see at other levels of government. So it really doesn't make sense for a councillor to bare his or her teeth, to act in a way that would hold other political actors accountable, when there's a very, very, 40%, very, very, very good chance that they will probably very soon be working with uh, the mayor and other councillors in this uh, in this executive body. So to wrap up, uh, there are many ways to organize uh, uh, city government in Canada. In fact, uh, one of the reasons city government is a, is, a, is a lovely phenomenon of study is because of this diversity. There's enormous diversity in the institutions of city government. Um, and some ways of doing so will enhance Accountability. Some ways of doing so will, will in fact hurt accountability. I think that in, in Montreal, for example, uh, it, it's hard to kind of measure these things, uh, to find the metrics to measure them, but in Montreal, accountability actually seems to be much stronger. Uh, it doesn't always lead to good governance, but uh, if you're interested in accountability, it seemed, mechanisms seem to be there for Montreal, uh, whereas in Winnipeg, this uh, really isn't the, uh, the case at all.